Um, what happened also with silence that we tried to play absolute silence, and what happened is that silence lost its value. You know, after a while, you lose awareness of the silence. And not only you lose awareness of the silence, there's no silence, you're in a, in a, in a screening room, and you hear people shuffling around or eating popcorn. You know, so there's no real sense of silence. So what we did is use the music in a way to accentuate those moments in which we went to complete silence. Uh, uh, that is like when, uh, the, the, you know, there are a couple of moments when uh, she enters the airlock or, or Clooney comes back. And then the, uh, um, uh, that, that same thing was to, to enhance the, this concept of, of now they are in an atmosphere, they're back in Earth. And in Earth, now sound travels, but travels depending on the density. So one thing is on air, or when, when you're in the atmosphere on air, or when you are underwater, that you can hear, but in a completely different texture, because uh, sound travels differently underwater, as we know. Uh, yes, uh, you were in the center. Um, my question is about the actor-director relationship. Um, I understand you actually had to pursue Sandra Bullock quite a few times in order to get her into the role. And I'm thinking, I know, that it takes a lot of trust um, in order to accept a role and continue such an ambitious project. Um, so I wanted to know a little bit more about how you gained her trust and in the moments that it became hardest for her, what were the conversations like for you to try to get her back into her uh, good acting mode? I have the theory that when she accepted to see me, is because she thought that I was Alejandro González Iñárritu. <laughs> and then uh, I went to see her, we talked, and then when I left, she realized that I was not him. Uh, uh, but, um, I, I was very intrigued about Sandra, and I went to see her in, um, in, in Austin. And what I, what I was very, very surprised is that she had read the script, loved the script, but she warned me even before going that she didn't want to work, that she was like busy with her life, and she didn't want to work. So I, um, but anyway, said, hey, can I go and talk to you? She said, well, if you want. We went there, she told me that she loved the script. But then we started talking, and not, we, we didn't talk once for one second about space or even the story of the script. We talked about the theme, the thematic of adversity. And we were so in sync, and for three hours we just talked about adversities in life. Uh, we didn't talk about anything else. Uh, so I left, and I, uh, I called uh, my producing partner, David Heyman, and said, hey, she's Ryan, but she doesn't want to make it, you know, she doesn't want to work. And it took uh, a couple of other calls. Uh, then she said that, well, that she didn't want to work, but she was very intrigued about our conversation. And so immediately I went to a plane again, and I went with her and to, to sit with her and keep on talking. And, uh, and then, you know, like, I think, I guess that we, uh, we conned her into the whole thing. Because the next thing she was into, into the whole, she was involved in the process. And, and one that she, she was, it was so clear that she just kept on saying, well, if, you, if I'm going to work, I have to work in something that takes me completely out of my comfort zone. Because so I am very clear about, about, you know, like what, what I have done. And, uh, and I, I have clear, I'm clear also what has worked in the past. Uh, but I don't want to go there. I want to go out of my comfort zone. I want to completely uh, go into places I've never been before. And so she was really fearless about it. And through the, and as everything, any rela relationship, you know, the first few weeks, it was a little tentative. But when we were, we were clear that we were working for the same goals, it just became, became, became a, this relentless uh, a collaboration in which, you know, she was millimetric about the screenplay and trying to explore every single uh, at second of the, of the emotional value. And, understanding uh, that it had to be sparse and we have to cut down dialogue and then she was there working with the animators and it was really a, it was an amazing collaboration i mean it's like she was collaborating hand in hand with tim weber the visual effects supervisor or with chivo 
You know, it was, uh, it, it, it became really, uh, particularly there was a, a core of people, it was the, the DP, the, the visual effects supervisor, uh, the writer, and myself with the actors. That was a very intimate thing and, and, and very collaborative. Um, and, and the thing is, when you are clear about the theme, you have a, a thematic agreement and you know the emotional goal that you're trying to reach. Everything becomes very simple. We have time for just one last question. Um, uh, guy all the way in the back. Bring a mic to him. Um, and then you're going to uh, introduce our next screening, right? Yeah, sure.